Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV, and today I'm talking with Zach Lynch, author of The Neuro Revolution, How Brain Science is Changing Our World. Zach, thanks for coming. And thanks for having me, Nick. What, the Neuro Revolution, uh, describe it for us. So throughout human history, we've gone through an agricultural revolution, an industrial revolution, and we're in the midst of an information revolution. You skipped the sexual revolution. Well, which that was, I, I've that, only heard, that's been I've going only on forever, about right? That. <laughs> so the Neuro Revolution. So the Neuro Revolution is where brain science is literally impacting nearly every aspect of our lives. What are the three uh, kind of developments in the neuro revolution or in brain science that well, excite you the most? Well, brain science is changing nearly every aspect of our lives, mm -hmm. from marketing to entertainment to law to theology to um, art. And across there, there's also um, great implications for medical sciences. Uh, talk about, uh, say, marketing. How, uh, I mean, we're understanding more about how the brain works and how it influences our behavior, or sees our behavior. Uh, you know, how does, uh, how does that affect marketing? Right, so the nascent field of neuromarketing is very interesting and it's blossoming. There's about 20 firms worldwide that are focusing on um, how to use EEGs and fMRIs, new brain scanning technologies, to improve the effectiveness of advertising. Does that uh, create a world of uh, kind of shopping automatons where we just, you know, I mean, is this... Can you press the buy button? Yeah, I mean, right? is, yeah, yeah. is it an update of uh, something like The Hidden Persuaders, the book about advertising in the 50s, where it said, okay, you know what, we're going to sell red cars because red triggers something in the brain or whatever. I mean, how, how does this move beyond that kind of um, sensibility? Well, there are definitely more advanced techniques and real-time responses based upon how individuals, their neurobiology actually responds and which part of the brains actually respond to particular parts and pieces of different um, advertisements. Does the individual or something as quaint a notion of free will or self-determination or, or autonomy, does it go out the window in the neuro revolution? Absolutely not, no. Um, the neuro revolution is really a broad societal global revolution where neurotechnology begins to impact nearly every aspect of our lives. Um, everything from warfare to how we develop tools to improve cognitive fitness. Um, so, I mean, this uh, you talked about medical advances. What are, what are the uh, kind of burgeoning or most exciting uh, kind of frontiers of medical science as it relates to neuroscience? So there are two very um, interesting areas. One is optogenetic neuromodulation. Mm -hmm. um, this new technology, which has emerged uh, from the convergence of several technologies over the past uh, five or six years, has given us the ability to actually um, tease out and stimulate specific neural circuits. So rather than a drug which sort of bathes the brain mm -hmm. in chemicals or uh, conventional neuromodulation, which is like a deep brain stimulation mm -hmm. platform which sends an electrode to a specific area of the brain and pulses out um, electricity, uh, optogenetic neuromodulation actually allows us to turn on and off circuits within the brain. Mm -hmm. The technology is very young but it's very exciting. And what will, that, what will that accomplish? Well, it might help us understand <clears throat> diseases and illnesses <clears throat> that are um, neurocircuitry specific. So um, it is believed that a lot of psychiatric illnesses, mm -hmm. schizophrenia, depression, anxiety, um, have less to do with receptors um, and more to do with dysfunctions in overall circuit, circuits and circuitries mm -hmm. within the brain. Um, so, I mean, will neuroscience cure Alzheimer's or will it make us, yes. or allow us to understand it in a yes. different way? Yeah, how, how, will that, how will that make the world better? <clears throat> does this, uh, you know, does it create a world of kind of uh, immortal people who never die or whose bodies dies but their brains live on forever? No, absolutely not. Currently, there are two billion people worldwide who are suffering some, from some sort of brain-related illness. That includes neurological diseases and psychiatric illnesses. Um, in the United States alone, it's reached over 100 million individuals. <clears throat> um, the annual economic burden of brain-related illnesses in the United States alone has reached over $1.3 trillion a year. And, and that's just counting Congress. And that's just counting... Yeah. Yeah, Congress and a couple no. of more people, right? right? <clears throat> and so um, these technologies uh, in development will help us sort of bend the cost curve of future healthcare costs. What um, a lot of people worry uh, when, as soon as you start talking about neuroscience or improving human cognition and whatnot, that you're going to create two classes, a kind of brave new world of, you know, the people who don't have access to this technology and people who do and pull apart from the rest of society, uh, you know, how do you, how do you uh, uh, kind of assuage people's fears about that? Well, there's fantasy and there's reality. Okay. And if you really take a look at where the technologies are headed, most of the technologies in development are around enabling people mm -hmm. 
to perform slightly better at tasks that individuals around them are already performing relatively well. Mm -hmm. There are no super enhancers out there in development that are on, yeah. you know, that are coming down the pipeline. Right. Uh, lots of people would so like So I shouldn't bother taking that SAT again? Uh, I'm beyond Don't that. bother with yeah, the SAT okay, yeah. again, right. Okay. So um, how, do we, how do we make neuroscience happen earlier rather than later in, in human history? Right, so over the past decade, I've been involved in several different initiatives that have been focused on accelerating the development of treatments for the brain and mm -hmm. nervous system. Um, from everything from launching conferences to bring together VCs uh, together with sort of researcher entrepreneurs who are developing these next generation treatments, um, launching a, um, a, an index with NASDAQ mm -hmm. um, so that you can track publicly traded neuroscience companies. How can we develop programs to accelerate the flow of capital towards these innovative companies with these new technologies to, to um, bring these new treatments to market? Right. So, we need to harness the free market. We need to harness um, the capacity of individuals that are already doing this work mm -hmm. and figuring out how to make it a more attractive place for private capital to actually place their money. What's the role of kind of uh, government regulation in either speeding this up or slowing it down? So another initiative that I've been uh, working on is the National Neurotechnology Initiative. This is a piece of legislation that we introduced into Congress uh, two years ago. Um, its focus is on improving national coordination among the different agencies that are focused on neuroscience research and development, the DOD, the VA, the NIH. There's currently about $8 billion a year spent among those three different agencies in neuroscience research. And, and federal dollars. Tax and federal dollars, dollars. Okay. right. And they're not coordinating very well. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So what would, uh, what would better coordination mean? Well, you could do a couple of different things. Um, you could have... Um, a national coordination office that would coordinate neuroscience research occurring among the different agencies so that they would, ha they would have improved visibility and information flow. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily telling them what they should be doing or how right. they should be coordinating, but just letting them know what the different types of research that's occurring, let's say in traumatic brain injury or post-traumatic stress disorder in different areas mm -hmm. of the government. Within the NIH itself right now, there are 16 different institutes mm -hmm. out of the 27 that are currently on, focused on some sort of brain or nervous system illness. Do you think that, the, I mean, is it the market that is going to deliver the biggest bang for the buck here in terms of developing and bringing to market um, solutions? There's a huge opportunity. Like I said, two billion people worldwide suffer from a brain or nervous system. So what's, if, uh, if you had one policy uh, initiative or one policy change that would allow this to happen more quickly, what would it be? I would improve the ability um, and capacity for um, private companies to be able to invest in neurotech companies. And how, how, how would that happen? Well, we could do it a whole wide variety of different ways. We could do it through tax policy. We could do it through um, investment tax credits, um, specifically focused on neuroscience-related companies. Um, I think there's a broad range of initiatives that we should be looking at um, from the perspective of how we actually um, instigate development and investment in this space. If, um, if there's one thing that uh, everyday people can do to improve their brain functioning on a daily basis, what is it? Exercise. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Any kind of exercise? Uh, preferably something that gets your heart rate moving for 15 or 20 minutes. And why does that help your brain? Oxygen uh, gets to your brain and it helps your circuitry stay happy. I was really hoping you Lots of hugs say. as well. Lots of hugs? Okay. Lots of hugs. I, I was, Oxytocin is good for the brain. What about drugs? Drugs, not hugs. Come on. There isn't a drug that we can take right Well, it now? depends on your definition of drugs. Okay. All right. right. Love is the drug, right? I think mm -hmm. that's, that's what, what Paul Brian Zach Ferry, would say. Yeah. Right. Well, I want to thank Zach Lynch, author of The Neuro Revolution, How Brain Science is Changing Our World, for talking to Reason TV today. I'm Nick Gillespie. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Nick. Thanks.